Hi everybody, welcome to Midweek. Glad you're with us again, and this week I have some wonderful guests. Probably a lot of you know who the Thorps are, but in case you don't, I'm gonna have them just kind of introduce themselves. We have a very special topic of which I would say these folks are kind of what I would consider experts in this field. We're gonna do some training, so we're gonna talk about it, but before we do that, Corrine, Jim, welcome. Thank Glad you. you're here. You. Good to be here. And uh, give us a little snapshot of who the Thorps are and your journey. Okay. We are Jim and Corrine Thorpe, and we, are missiona- we were missionaries with World Venture. It's hard to remember. We're retired now, but we were in Brazil for 17 years and then in Mozambique, and then our mission asked us to become the directors for the Americas, which includes caring for our workers in North, Central, and South America. And when you cared, uh, that meant travel. Yes. Because uh, from what I knew of you, you were present. <laughs> yes. Very present. That means in homes, in countries. So uh, you traveled more than most United pilots. Yes. <laughs> not quite. Maybe not. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> Jim, that's really, uh, you, you did some doctoral work in this right. of just care. And so that's what we're going to be about this coming weekend. Talk to us a little bit about both your experience, but also uh, what this weekend looks like. Because what we want to do as a church is how do we best care for missionaries that come and visit us, but not just come and visit us. We may have conversations with them in country. We actually may visit them because one of our goals is to be with every one of our missionaries every five years. When we go there, a lot of us need to be kind of cued as what is it that we can do best to care for the heart of a missionary? What's some of the training that you're going to be doing this Sunday night? Yeah, and I would say it it comes from a discussion really I had, first of all, with Randy Barch about the missions team and training he was wanting to do for helping the church do exactly what you said and care for missionaries and a comment that was made to him about sometimes it's hard for missionaries to come home and they they don't feel like they fit in they don't feel like uh, people are really interested in what they've experienced over the last three four or five years and so we started talking about this and it does dovetail with the work I did in my doctorate uh, studying conflict among missionaries and while it's not really the conflict uh, among missionaries that we're talking about here but out of that just came this uh, this understanding that part of the conflict comes from uh, a poor relationships. And if we could develop safe relationships where conversation can flow easily and, and, and be good conversation, mm-hmm. it would avoid some of the conflicts, but also help other conflicts to be resolved in a more healthy manner. So your training this weekend that all of us are invited to is really not just for us and missionaries, but that's the sweet spot. But it's really not focused on how to resolve conflict, but how to, I, I, I'm going to say, and you expand on this, how to express an interest in, I want to hear your story. I want to hear about yeah. you. Yeah. And, and in particular, how do you do that when a person's coming back and maybe you haven't seen them in three years, or frankly, maybe they haven't been back in this culture in two to three years. And imagine, just imagine, if you've been gone for three years and you come back and you even try and understand the United States. I mean, in three years, that's an eternity now. Yeah. So as you, as you train us this weekend, what are some of the things that we're gonna, you're gonna be walking us down? Not, not just conflict, really. It's, it's yeah. how to take an interest in a person's life and story. Yeah, and part of what what that is, is how do we ask good questions? Um, Mm. You know, you think about some of the weird questions. Uh, Somebody just won the Super Bowl, and the reporter says, well, how do you feel? Well, it's not really a great question. Um, (laughs) And and that's, you know, ask missionaries, well, how are you doing? Um, So it's really helping understand who the missionary is by asking questions. And I think, you know, Corrine, you, you, we've talked a lot about your experience coming home and how you felt as a, somebody outside of the culture coming back into this culture. I remember the first home assignment that I came, we came back to, and I went to a wedding, and it was a woman presiding over the wedding, and it was like, 
where have I come from? <laughs> Out the moon or somewhere? Because it was so foreign to my context. But uh, something else that really happened that marked me deeply was we were invited to someone's home in our church here. Mm -hmm. And they spent the entire evening asking us questions about our life and ministry, interested in us as people. Because sometimes I think people think that missionaries aren't real people. They're either weird or they're these privileged people that are so far above them that you can't get to know them. Mm -hmm. And we aren't those either one of those categories. Mm -hmm. We're just people, but we feel like foreigners now in our home country mm -hmm. because we've been away, we've experienced another worldview, we've experienced things, deep things with God that have shaped us and changed us. And so when we come home, we don't always know how to relate those things. And if someone's not interested, it's really hard to know how to express that. So when this couple just wanted to hear about our lives, we, we came away just thinking, wow, this was so fun and so wonderful. If everyone would do that, mm -hmm. what a difference it would make to refresh the missionary. It strikes me, it's, it's both for the person who's never met you, that can explore your story and hear your story. But the other one is the person who knows you well. Yeah. But the reality is if you're gone for three years, you're leading, doing ministry, experiencing disappointment, mm -hmm. victories. In three years, you really are a different person. Mm -hmm. You've changed. And both of those require learning to ask good questions. Yeah. Learning to explore. Mm -hmm. Another thing, you, you emphasized it. They took the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that there's a better gift mm -hmm. that a person can ever give than to say, I want to get to know you and do it not in five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Takes time, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 One, of the, one of the things that came out of my studies uh, when I was looking at conflict was just the importance of good communication, but this idea of empathetic listening, really stopping to, to listen to what the other person is saying um, with a desire to understand the person. Um, so it's not just asking good questions, but it's asking good questions and then listening to the answer to try and understand. Um, one of the things that we've just seen so much is it makes it hard is <laughs> we're going to talk about this, but to be able to actually listen to people, we have to stop talking. And some people have a hard time with that. They don't stop talking long enough to actually listen to what the other person yeah. uh, is saying, or they've got in their mind their own story that they want to tell. And so rather than listening to the story of the other person, they're thinking, how do I bring my story in uh, and get my time in. Um, so just the importance of, of not just listening, but listening to understand the other person. That's great. So this weekend, we're going to do a training Sunday night, six o'clock yep. here at the Community Life Center. Yep. Jim, give me a target. Clearly, we want to care for our missionaries. That's what's leading this. You're going to teach us how to ask good questions, how to listen for understanding, Broaden it a little bit, though, because I my right. sense is this is going to be far more than just for all of our missionaries, which absolutely we care. But I kind of sense this might be helpful for families. I was just listening to a podcast the other day uh, about the <laughs> division in our country politically. And his whole point was if we would just learn to ask questions of the other side and listen to what they have to say, what a difference it would make in terms of relationship. Um, not necessarily uh, with a desire or with the goal of agreeing, mm -hmm. but more with a desire of let me understand why you believe what you believe. Yeah. Even if it's different than what I believe, I want to understand you and know how you got there. Wow. And so, yeah, it could be for families and in, in church Just relationships and even in civic political. Friends, this Sunday, 6 o'clock, we're going to get the privilege and, and sincerely the privilege of a wealth of history, of practice, of learning how to be present with other people and show an interest in their story. Uh, probably no better gift than that. 
Thanks, Thorpes, Thank you. for all the years that we've gotten the privilege of partnering with you. It's been a privilege to be a part of this. These two uh, were very instrumental in Carrie and I landing here. So forever we are indebted to them. Yeah. And uh, We met in Mozambique. We did. Um, that, was, that was a wonderful trip. It was. Um, that was wonderful. This weekend, can't wait to see you. We're back in the book of Ephesians during the weekend services. Sunday night this weekend. We are going to have just a night of learning to ask good questions and listening to hear the story of other people's hearts. So hope to see you then. God bless you. We love you.